Bibles to uh, Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25 verses 27 onwards. Genesis 25, 27 onwards. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man, dwelling in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. Therefore his name was called Edom. Jacob said, Sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear, swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way, thus Esau despised his birthright. I think it's a very familiar passage of scripture um, between, uh, this is uh, the first, probably the first uh, division in between Esau and Jacob. It starts saying, it, this is a chapter where they are actually born and it gives a brief description of Jacob and Esau. In verse 27 it says, when the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents. I like to focus on Esau for this uh, thought uh, today. I was thinking about this, it said Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. So that was his passion, that was something he was good at. So probably he had, I was thinking in, the, in contemporary standards, he would have an Instagram of, account which said The Hunter, right? And every weekend he would put this videos of him, his uh, whatever he hunted, maybe a rabbit, maybe a deer or something that, you know, he, uh, he, he did for that weekend and he would put that picture and he would have that video there. So everybody would like that or you know comment about it and say it's cool or whatever and after some time maybe he would start a podcast like how to do hunting and that becomes a hit uh, and that was his passion he loved it he was good at it and he was living a life like that right he was he was good um, in that and we know in chapter 27 even when Isaac says, uh, I want to bless you. And he goes and gives, and hunts, you know, he's asked to go hunt something for him and prepare a meal for him. So we see that Esau was very much into this particular uh, hunting. And this is not only just Esau. Another thing I noticed recently was even his dad encouraged him in this, right? Chapter 25, verse 28, it says, Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. So whenever Esau came back with whatever he hunted down that day, he would he would cook uh, his meal with that, and you know he, Isaac would eat, love eating that. So Isaac loved food, Esau loved hunting. So they were he was really encouraged by his dad in this particular act. So all these encouragements, everything, Esau was, Esau was very passionate about this. And that was his lifestyle, I believe. That's what he did always, and he enjoyed it, and that's how he was living. Even in chapter 27, as I said, if you read three, verse 3 and 4, Isaac says, Now take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field, hunt game for me and prepare me delicious food such as I love and bring it to me so that I may eat that my soul may bless you before I de die. There you can see he's saying prepare me a delicious food that I love so he's already know what his father loves and and this was this was more of a practice they used to have in their family. Now when we read in verse 29 of chapter 25 
we see this narrative between Esau and Jacob. Now Jacob was cooking stew and now we do not know where this is happening but Jacob was Jacob was a very quiet person as it says and he was in the tent mostly so he was helping up with this and mostly he he must have ended up being a herdsman right like his uh, Abraham and uh, Isaac he was cooking a stew and Esau comes in from the field and it says he was exhausted he was very exhausted uh, when he came back from his uh, uh, f- f- came back from the field and Esau said to Jacob let me eat some of that red stew for I am exhausted therefore his name was called Edom so here what we see is a very natural progression of events somebody there's a brother coming after his work in the field and he says I'm very hungry uh, and I think seeing the stew at that time must have made him more hungry and he he asked for food and here Jacob Jacob shows his true colors turn I mean we know what happened during the birth and here he's actually proving it he says sell me your birthright now it's a very demanding sentence there uh, he's saying sell me your birthright now so it's it's very commanding and he so says i am about to die of what use is a birthright to me now when we read this i think the first thing that comes to our mind is how bad jacob is right so we'll see he is using this opportunity to get get this birthright and he's using uh, taking advantage of it but if you see verse 34 the author here is not really focused on Jacob but he's focused on Esau because it, it, it the verse 34 is all about Esau it says in the last part thus Esau despised his birthright so this is a narrative which talks about Esau and saying how did Esau despise his birthright and that is the fact the focus of this particular uh, passage and here Esau is coming to Jacob Jacob is playing his trick here taking advantage of the situation and at that point Esau is saying in verse 32 I am about to die of what use is a birthright to me we need to understand what this birthright means in the ancient context birthright it gave, it gave a special esteem or a position of honor uh, to the firstborn in the family. If you read Exodus 4.22, Jeremiah 31.9, you can, you can understand all that. I think you may be familiar with the birthright. So they are given a special place of honor. Uh, there is some preeminence, you know, related, uh, importance related with that position. They also got the double portion of the inheritance. So uh, the the eldest brother would get the double of what others got. And another thing about the uh, birthright is the firstborn was also dedicated. Or the first fruit, as you know, was always dedicated to the Lord. It could be the first fruit from the land. First, first fruit, you know, in many, many cases would be dedicated to the Lord. You can read in Exodus 22, 28, chapter 13, 2, you know, you can see all that first fruit and the rules that God had commanded or God gave uh, to these to the Israelites so the birthright was something very important it had privileges but it also had a special honor and I was also thinking this is this is something very important that the the, the firstborn is dedicated to the Lord and here Esau from his reply what we are what we understand is he's saying what use is a birthright to me because I'm just about to die because of his situation that he is in Esau is despising this privilege that he had in his life he's just giving that away for something very temporal and that is very clear from his his uh, his his dialogue here, his his response to 
uh, Jacob here. And the important thing that we see is it is possible that at one moment you may probably do something bad, but the th verse 34 is also very important. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentils too, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. What we see here is not only that Esau did something, gave up or exchanged something very important for something temporal, but he did not even regret about it at that point. He did not even care about it. He drank and he was he just went his way. We don't see any kind of remorse or grief or anything re regarding that. He is just moving on as if nothing has happened in his life. Now, one important thing here is, even though he gave up his birthright, we see that in chapter 27, he Isaac is still considering him as the eldest. But I think one important, and we know that in this uh, Jacob again cheats him and he loses all his blessings. But one important thing that we see in Malachi 1, 1 to 3 is what probably Jacob lost here in this episode is not just some physical blessings, but the, the blessing that he would have received through Abraham probably. Here we see in Malachi chapter 1, I'll read from verse 2 onwards. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? Is not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord. Yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated. It is not something that happened at that point for Esau, but if we look at the biblical story, we see that God is, is making a choice there, you know, preferring Jacob over Esau. And I said one of the significance of birthright is that, you know, the firstborn is dedicated to the Lord. When Esau said, what use is this birthright? He was basically also just despising and ignoring this dedication to the Lord. It is not so important to be committed to the Lord. He is making a decision which is displacing something very important to God here. And when we read Hebrews chapter 12, 16 and 17, we also see what happened at the end to Esau and how it is interpreted. Hebrews chapter 12, 16 and 17, it says that no one is sexually moral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he decided to inherit the blessings, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. What do we see here is Esau despising something very important that was considered very important in that culture. He just despised it for a temporal blessing. And when the, in, in chapter 12 in Hebrews, when the author is saying that he despised a blessing for a single meal, he sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward when he desired, he was rejected and he found no chance to repent. In the context of Hebrews, it's talking about, it's talking to a people who is about to go away from the church and following Christ to Jewish tradition. And to them, the author is saying, remember Esau who made the wrong choice in his life. And when you turn back from Christ to Judaism, you are making that wrong choice and you may not even get another chance to repent. And that is the context in which Esau is represented. We talked about Esau's passion and his destiny. What I wanted to think about is one question here. Why, why would Esau do this? Why did he just despise something so important for a temporal thing as a single meal? There are a few things that uh, 
I, one thing that I wanted, there may be many reasons, but one thing I was thinking is, at that, the his impulse or his action at that particular point would have come from his perspective towards his life. He was hunting, he was, he was behind his passion and there is nothing wrong in that. But when, when he came to a crisis or a situation when there was a need and there was pressure from outside or externally there was pressure, the immediate action that he took was something against the Lord against what God would consider important. He despised it. He made the wrong choice at a weak at a weak point in his life. And I think this is because it is not because he wanted to do it. I think he never thought about this birthright any time in his life. He was always behind hunting and he was encouraged by his dad and he never was never worried about it. He thought it doesn't matter, but he did not even think about it. And later he is coming and thinking about this. He is repenting about what he did. So the, the, he did not even understand what is the value of this birthright. He did not have that perspective on, about this birthright or, or something so important. He had a very wrong perspective about it. And because he had that perspective, whatever decision he was making, based on his his thinking, was wrong. And he did not even regret, he did not even realize that he made a wrong choice in his life because he never compared his life with this birthright or he, he it was never a part of it. Where one thing I was reminded of when I was reading this is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, we have a very similar situation. Matthew chapter 4, it talks about the temptations of Jesus. When Jesus, uh, I'll just read from verse 1, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Esau gave up. He also was exhausted just from one day's work. Here Jesus he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and he was fully God and fully man and he was also hungry and he had the power to make those stones to bread but there he's not doing it because even at that point, at a weak point, he knows that it is the wrong choice to listen to the devil and do what he's commanding. If at that one point, if Jesus listened to the to Satan and he followed what Satan said, we could never probably call Jesus as a sinless one. We can never say he's the high, perfect high priest. All the plan of salvation, everything would go away. But Jesus... When he was tempted and the situation of weakness, he was able to make the right choice. We see one person giving it away, the other person uh, you know, doing the right thing here. Why was Jesus able to do that? In Hebrews chapter 12 itself, we see how Jesus, Jesus was leading his life. Hebrews chapter 12 1 to 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. What we see there is Jesus in this world, he had temptations and he had struggles, 
he he for the joy that was set before him there was something in front of jesus that he was looking at and we can say that is probably his him riding uh, sitting at the right hand of the father in obedience to father in john 17 we say that jesus is saying i have accomplished the mission that you gave for me his focus was on fulfilling the will of god sitting at the right hand of the father and his his view was always on the eternal things things that concerned god and for eso i think he completely lost his vision so he did not even consider, he couldn't even understand the value of this birthright and he just gave it away and there was a time later when he wanted to get that back and did not work i think in our lives also we make a lot of choices how do we make these choices in our lives one thing which i often uh, one 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 point one thing that i imagine that iso had was probably his mind was all about the passion and whatever he was doing just like in philippians chapter 3 Uh, verse nineteen it says, "Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glory in their shame. With minds set on earthly things. If our mind is set on earthly things, we are going to make a lot of choices, the wrong choices. But if our mind is set on things that is above, Colossians chapter three, set your heart on things that is above. That is a command." and that is the only way that we can make a good choices in our lives let's look to jesus who has set an example before us i want to end with one question iso was exhausted from working in the field probably hunting what are we exhausted by or what are we occupied by in our minds if you do not have the right perspective if we do not have the right destination or the right things right focus in our minds we may also we may also not endure till the end and it can happen in many ways it could be in relation to our salvation would you leave the world look to jesus and follow christ it could be it could be in you, know, you may be a believer but it could be something that you want to serve god but because of the other things that's happening maybe something that is of that is you're passionate about or something that is good but that is leading you to make the wrong choices wrong priorities in your lives let us examine our lives and make the right choices for god let our let our mind be renewed every day by the word of god so that we can discern what is right and make the right choices and romans 12:1 and 2 says that is worship where we discern we renew our mind and discern what is needed and when we move forward let us not make the mistake of what eso did in his life let us be like christ focus on jesus look to jesus and run the race and do not fall may god bless you with this